little over six months. But in the interest of time, if it's okay with you, we can dispense with the reading of the highlights of the of the previous meeting and just agree to approve this conditionally subject to the submission of corrections uh, to the Secretariat within five working days from today. Okay, Bayon? Pag wala pa receive ng corrections, then we give it approved. Okay, can anyone uh, please move for the document? Okay, with that condition. Second, any objection? There's none. Motion is carried. Okay, the highlights of the previous meeting is hereby conditionally approved. Okay, can we now uh, hear updates of matters arising from the highlights of the present meeting? Uh, Annie, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Now, before I proceed to the updates of matters arising from the highlights of the previous meeting, let me just acknowledge our um, newcomers okay, in today's meeting. From the DPWH, we have Sir John Tama. Jan Renz de Paz. And from the province of Southern Leite, from the PPDO, we have Mam Sarah Jean Banjas. Thank you very much, Mam, for coming. So let me now direct you to tab C of your agenda folder. That's updates on matters arising from the highlights of the first semester Article 8 meeting. So on Article 8, Resolution Number 3, Series of 2023, entitled Recommending to the Full Council, RBC Full Council, Join the Article 8 members from the government sector to designate their permanent and alternate representatives to the committee. Um, the resolution was adopted by the RDCA and um, through RDCA and RBCA resolution number 46. Um, unfortunately, as of November 24, 2023, 18 Palampo out of 28 submitted their permanent and alternate representatives, although um, I personally already messaged the PPDCs and the other CPDCs. Unfortunately, we're still waiting for their um, reply. So to those agencies, since you have there the list as Annex A, for instance, LTFRB, they've been at the, attending the meeting, but unfortunately, no response by them. Maybe you can help us follow up your um, principles to provide us the names. And, uh, may I interrupt? Yes. Uh, has there been an increase from the... Uh, uh, significant uh, naman. Uh, significant naman. Um, like how many you have the count? Uh, anyways, uh, you can provide it later. Can you proceed then? Yeah, as reported, significant among the new addition, but again, we need to complete the list so we can update the um, permanent and alternate representatives of the RDA. Um, Marita number two, approving the provinces of Northern Samar, Samar and Southern Lake as sites for the implementation of the D40 project. The resolution was transmitted to the provinces of Northern Samar, Samar, and Southern Lake. Now, provincial workshops in this pilot areas were conducted on October 10 to 11 in summer, 16 to 17 in northern summer, and then um, this month, November 21 to 2022, in southern Mayte, to engage the local offices relevant to the E4DR project implementation. Now, updates on the next steps and what are we going to expect from the E4DR project um, next year will be reported. Item number three, endorsing the summer Sangunia, uh, endorsing to the summer Sangunia Panel Region, the Summer Provincial Development and Physical Framework Plan for 2022 to 2021 for adoption and enactment and to the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development for approval. The resolution was transmitted to the province on June 2, 2023. And then the summer PPEO reported that they submitted the revised PDPFP include the comments of the article 8 to be issued last September 6. Now currently they are complying with some of the issues comments. So hopefully they can um, finish as soon as possible as mentioned by RD Rizal. Hopefully we can have it approved by issue early next year. Then on article 8 resolution number 6, series of 2023, inviting um, PSR Judah Aliposa as a special member or guest uh, the Regional Steering Committee of the A4DR project. Um, we are happy to know that he affirmed, he gladly affirmed his concurrence to be part of the Arnold case, specifically as a project of steering committee. Now, Secretariat to follow up again with the following non Arnold members to ask for their concurrence to be stakeholder of the A4DR project. Um, 
these are the, the agencies, PLGF, then we have S uh, state, uh, state universities, we have the North Northwest Summer State University, BSU, UEP, the United Province State University, Philippine Space Agency, Philippine Insurers and Insurers Association, Philippine Life Insurance Association. So we did, we did send um, follow-up letters to this entities last June 1, and all of them affirmed their concurrence except for DSU. President, yeah, um, it's only BSU ma who did not send any reply. BSU currently does not have a president yet because the yeah, president who leave uh, or uh, has uh, an expired term already, an expired and a second term, so the search process is ongoing. But they, they do have an OIC. But the board meeting that I because I sit in the board, I get out. Okay, um, last item, the Secretary to check updates or any available information on the RDC endorsement on the funding proposal for the Minahaan Watershed from the Great Climbing Fund of the province of Leyte. Um, the climbing resilient plan management project in the province of Leyte was endorsed through RDC resolution number 103 series of 2021. Now, based on our traffic the proposal was resubmitted to the Green Climate Fund for evaluation. This resubmission uh, incorporated additional comments and inputs that were gathered during the initial review with the consultant. Matagal talaga yun sa GCM. But um, we're hoping that um, uh, the Binahaan Watershed will be considered in an upcoming project. Now, last um, November, first week of November, World Vision Philippines and Korea, they actually had a um, meeting with us. And then they're conducting a consultation um, meeting regarding their proposed watershed development project in Eastern Visaya. So at the moment, they're doing scoping study. And then we propose ma, to somehow consider yung um, Minahaan watershed as one of its project sites. Because at the moment, they're looking at the summer area. Kasi. But we told them that hopefully you can um, look at it. So the proposal, although the proposal will still be through GCM, but sana may sana. So let's just go for uh, some good news on this one. So Madam Chair, that's all for updates on matters arising. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Any comments? Any additional updates from your end? So wala na, uh, na. So we proceed to review this list. And first in the night is the the uh, PRRCC in Hans Eastern Summer PPPMP, and this will be presented to us by no less than the PPPC of the province, uh, Jojo Agubar. Good morning to the distinguished uh, family, especially to our chairman and our group of community personalities who is always at the board of the Greenland Office Hour. Of course, to the vice chairman, the very operating director of the mission of the director of the Office Hour, which is one of the great opportunities. Uh, the distinguished uh, members of this uh, regional language committee, the Secretary of the Army, a pleasant good morning to all of us. I was uh, early in the director of the Soviet Union, 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 Existing rules and policies. But with that as it I have there with me and staff to be real alone with me. <laughs> so, this is the updated BRCC Enhanced Provincial Development and Fiscal Framework Plan of the province of Eastern Sama. Our PDP is for last uh, year. So, 
we made it a point to immediately update uh, the PUP. Of course, with some glitches, with John and Henry, pero sa tulong at awa ng Panginoon. And of course, and of course, with the help of Mom Camille, uh, na minsan kahit na naka-unlip, kinukulit ko, na nagawa namin ito. So, uh, please bear with me if I will uh, be presenting this we had 15 minutes because I am only allowed uh, 15 minutes uh, presentation. Anyway, it's all on only uh, 10, almost 10 o'clock. Uh, uh, 10 pa lang, 10 five. So, so, okay, so I can uh, use the time. So the outline of the uh, like presentation covers the provincial green profile with lack of deep music context, black over installation, the PDP is designed by the provincial development goals and objectives, the proposed framework of strategies and the activities. On historical background, as we all know, Eastern Summer plays a major role in discovering uh, uh, the it was in Eastern Summer where Ferdinand Magellan landed in Omaha Island in the town of Iwan on March 16, 1521. So, in 1596, also, there was a Swiss consolidation that uh, was uh, spearheaded by Jesuit missionaries. And in 1901, there was the popular Balagrito massacre. And then 1944, the first battle uh, occurred wherein the U.S. Army Rangers landed in the island of Suruan and Iran. I number 4221 approved on June 19, 1965, divided the old province of Samar into three separate provinces of northern western and eastern Samar. On District 1, we have uh, 11 uh, local government units, uh, including the city government of Corona as the capital city. And then this picture we have 12 local government units of post uh, by Corona Balancayan, Lorente down to Giwan, including the appendix towns. On population and housing, uh, on 2020 census, we have 477,168 persons, and we have an average household size with 4.4 persons. So, a part of this context covers the, 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 to develop the overall vision for the province, to provide an analytical basis for understanding existing conditions and identifying the development issues, problems, opportunities, goals, objectives, and targets of the problems. And then we translate the vision into implementable strategies towards the determining of those objectives and targets. And in guiding the vision, we identify two pieces consistent with the proposed strategies. The PDP serves as a vertical link between the provincial, regional, and national development objectives and priorities, and the PPEs and the PDPP are the basis of the multi year PDIP and AIP. The DIP serves the basis for budgetary application for the PPEs here. Our coverage of the plan is a 10 year plan which covers 2023 to 2032, which coincides with the three year terms 
of the provincial elected officials and can be aligned with the bold term of the national leadership. So the geographical coverage covers the entire jurisdiction of the province with uh, one city, 597 barangays. That's the primary level of analysis. The sector coverage covers the neutral sectors relevant to the development of the province that are covered by the PDPP. Our climate plan, the main body of the PDPP is organized into vision, planning environment, development issues, problems, goals, objectives and targets, strategies, plans, programs, projects, and activities. On the early vision statement, we look at the uh, Eastern Eastern Visayas vision, wherein a resilient and prosperous region where people enjoy equitable socioeconomic opportunities for the benefits of sustainable human development. In our previous uh, PDP vision, it will be memorizing it day and night step for the so we make it sure that our vision will be memorized by heart and minds at least of every Eastern Samarina so that we are in balance with our vision uh, of the province. So this is our previous vision. And through a series of workshops and other uh, activities, our vision was translated into comprehensive and compact vision in accordance with the vision of Eastern Visayas. Our vision now has this name, a biodiverse, self-sufficient, and resilient province where people are part of. Uh, we are very sure that this is in consonance with the vision of uh, Eastern Visayas. And then our uh, common tagline now Aton Provincia, Tau Iton If, if, if uh, we look at the people as a paramount concern, everything will be covered. And then our mission statement to improve the well-being and resilience of Eastern Sunrises. So we look at the planning environment. The components are the location, land area, political subdivision, population and settlements, physical resources, economy, transportation access and circulation, income, employment, service access and property, land use and physical framework. Our orientation, land area, and provincial uh, political subdivision. The province is located at the eastern part of Samar Island, the one with three. Its boundaries are northern, Samar on the north, Samar on the west, Lefty Road on the south, and Philippine Sea on the east. Our land area is 4,614.7 square kilometer based on land area certified to be in by the Land Management Bureau. It is 19.98% of the region's total land area. Our political subdivision composed of 32 municipalities, one city, and 597 barangays. So by our location alone, it can be linked that really we will be considered as the welcoming party to all the typhoons that will pass in region. Uh, we, are face, we are facing the Pacific Talaga on the east. where the sun rises early. Kami rin ang unang nakakatingin ng unang buwan ng sikat na araw. So, our population settlements. In 2020, we have 477, 168,000. 8.9% higher than the 2015 population. Our growth rate is 7.5%, 4.5% percent, I mean. 
our population is expected to go more than 42 years. So, Corona has the biggest population and Maslow has the smallest population. Biggest increase in population 2015 to 2020 emanates from Boronga, Dolores, and Lorente. Our population density is 103 persons per square kilometer. Our age structural dependency ratio, which is 22. 0.47 years and then the productive growth from 50 to 64 years old is 59.12 percent dependent growth 0 to 40 years old 34.32 percent 69 dependents for every 100 persons in the productive ages 4.4 persons average household size on education and literacy, we have this literacy rate of 97%, the second highest in the region. Well, the literacy rate is 97.7%, and then the literacy rate is 96.3%. Education and attainment, population are degree holders, 7.94%, 3.5%. And then attended or completed inventory, 44 for 90 percent, and then the data for the situation, 7.94 percent. Existing settlement pattern, our urban central population, population 69, 297,000 in Boronga City. Minor urban centers, more than 30,000, but less than 60,000, emanates from D1 or us and the laws. Our existing settlement pattern. Large towns, we have more than 50,000 at least uh, 30,000 population that emanates from San Cedro and Abid and Llorente. Major towns, more than 10,000 but less than 30,000 population in from Tan, Solan, Artiche, San Policarpo, San Maria, Tina Pondan, Mayro, Lopanaliga, Genma, the Poros, Barangay, and Lawan. Small towns, less than 10,000 population, the Nani, Mercedes, Papa, and Maslo. Our physical resources, for that area, as I have said, already we have 4,640.7 square kilometers. Inhabited island includes Omono Island, where Ferdinand Magellan landed first. Sulaman, Manitani, Suluan, this all came from the one. And then some recent pay from Sulak, Ilabaan, the Binobo, Ayando, Maliwali, and Poti, Eric, the Binobo, Ayando, Pakoronga, Maliwali, Poti, Trampa, Salcedo, Minado, Fabiola, Llorente, Tobago, Tigli, from Oras. Uh, our uh, principal metal basins of Ras, Dolores, Madawi, Tap, Boronga, Solibao, Llorente, and Malangiga. Problem watershed areas, covers Lawaan, Watershed Forest Reserve, and Cotton Watershed Forest Reserve. Our uh, mineral reserves include metallic, nickel, copper, baxite, 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 manganese, and chromite. Non metallic, coal, clay, San Gradle, Guano. Others, gold, aluminum, iron, and gel. Our slope classification, we have uh, 0 to 0.5%. Uh, percent. Uh, 0 to 0.3% percent limit to very gently sloping. 3 to 8% gently sloping to undulating. 8 to 18 percent moderately sloping and rolling. 18 to 30 percent rolling to heavy, 30 to 50 percent steep hills and mountains, uh, plus 50 percent very steep hills and mountains. This covers the total land area of 4,170.8 square kilometers. Our land precipitation it includes the alienable and uh, uh, 
is possible that covers 142,222 hectares. Uh, it covers and it, it, it is equivalent to 33.33%. Uh, forest land total to 289,743 hectares, which is equivalent to 66.77%. All protected areas, the NIFAS, the National Integrated Protected Areas, or part of Samar Island, is IMP, which encompasses 19 municipalities and 18 barangays in Eastern Samar with an area of 150,463.39 hectares. This composed of 47.58% of Samar Island Natural Park. Namne areas lands with more than 50% slope, various steep hills and mountains and mangrove forests. Natural as a areas are protected agricultural lands. 107,619 hectares as a strategic crop subdevelopment zone under the sub BC program. Our economy uh, opposed to this industry and specialization. On agriculture, we have 36.47%. Mining quality composed of your 0.51%, manufacturing 3.71%, construction 1.82%, service and making industry 17.11%, wholesale retail 11.9%, transport communication storage 6.4%, and that defined 53.49%. The potentials for contributing to local economy economic growth are economic business industries, employment potential, and competitiveness. That builds on agriculture, tourism, mining, wholesale and retail, transportation, communication, and storage. Our investment priority projects, investment with best potential for contributing to the local economic growth of the province, agriculture, livestock production and fishery. So we all know Eastern Samar is the number one tuna producing uh, province in the entire region. We have also agriculture and inland fishing. We have several uh, groupers, bangos in its production and inland fishing, telapio production and fish processing. Of course, for reason, we uh, have the problem of Givan and Borongan Airports. Our uh, Borongan Airport got cutters now to twice a week uh, trip to Cebu. And then uh, the human connected directly to Manila on uh, Monday and Friday. We have to be uh, of service daily. We are only waiting for the slot on uh, landing in Manila. And uh, plus the fact that uh, in Kalikuan Island, uh, it is somewhat uh, moving to solving as compared to Sierra. We are studying on how we can maximize our potential on tourism. And then on mining also, there are establishments, uh, industrial scale mining, of course, with the observance of the protection of our uh, environment. We cannot uh, compromise the development or investment of this area if our environment will be compromised. The government is very emphatic that we will not be compromising our environment even if it involves development uh, or investing in these mining areas. We can uh, dwell on other uh, investment projects. And then industries that generate income and employment that need to be improved on competitiveness. Coconut industry, the forestry, and then industries that 
support the development of other industries, transportation and telecommunication, wholesale and hotel and power. Now we have the top hydro, which is uh, uh, now operating. So uh, uh, we hope that it will contribute to the lessening of the power rates in our province. On transportation and access and circulation, on external linkages, we have the major outside, which are the South Summer Coastal Road, Right Top Road, Summer Island, Circumferential Road, and so on. And then transport, air transportation, we have our airports, the Moronga and New York airports. Water transportation, we have seaports from Moronga and Southport, municipal ports in Iwa, or Has Dolores and in Portos. And there are cost reasons by other municipalities. And on internal circulation, we have vehicle networks that run along coastal areas. We have provincial municipal of Rangayos, Ventane, Poblacions, and the Barangays. Mass long still use river transportation due to absence of road. But now, we have now the improvement of the, the, the low risk mass long road, which can be accessed with. Uh, not in rainy days, but hopefully we can uh, finish it uh, within uh, one to two years. So our pri priority internal linkage roads, we must look at having the lowest road, improvement of the public architecture road, including the construction of bridges leading to the population, completing the provincial rural roads, Rehabilitation of existing park and parking roads and construction of new FMRs late to late production areas to markets and interior communities to town centers. On social services, we have under our helps, health facilities, we have 12 government hospitals, 10 private hospitals and clinics, and 26 municipal health centers, and we have 104 Barangay Health Centers. Total hospital bed capacity, 437. Uh, uh, hospital bed to population ratio, 1 is to 1,069. In nutrition from 2015, we have prevalence of underweight and severely underweight preschool children, 9.15 percent. Prevalence of stunted and severely stunted preschool, 20% and prevalence of wisdom and severe wisdom first for January 4.21%. Our health programs and projects, health delivery, health service delivery, governance, financing, and regulatory. And we will target it by uh, 2023 and 2032 to achieve these health programs and projects. On education, uh, we have uh, elementary and secondary institutions uh, distributed along the entire province. Our proposed programs, projects, and activities on education subsector includes improving learning outcomes through collaborative supervision, in service training, student assessment, multi grade, physical facilities development early childhood care and development, student assistance, manpower skills development. On security, we have the number of policemen ratio by municipality, uh, which is all distributed along the entire province. And an average of one is to 422. On the NUP and uniform personnel, our average is 1 is to 680. On utility and infrastructure services, our water and sanitation, our number of households with access to safe water. So, from uh, General MacArthur and uh, uh, for us, we have 100%, relatively high, uh, our uh, average is almost 90% with access to safe water. 
So 94%. On sanitary toilets, uh, we have a relatively also high um, access to sanitary toilets. So we have 72%. We still uh, uh, aim for higher uh, and some of these municipalities have been declared as zero of identification uh, municipalities. On power and electricity. So on power rates, we have now been 10.265 kilowatt per hour. Commercial 8.99, industrial 9.75, Public buildings 9.1036, stabilized 9.1484. With the operation of the type top hydro, we think that uh, 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 it's now a position that our uh, power rate is lower to 8 pesos per kilowatt hour. Communication, that like the report provided by in all communication, cellular and phone services, smart communication, and globe available in all municipalities, cable TV available in all municipalities, 1A registration, 1A registration in Morgan City, and now we have additional in Sula, Iwan, and San Cedro registration, and then general network television station in Morgan City. Uh, flood mitigating measures and then Drainage and flood control and the construction of dams, dikes, construction of drainage along major rivers, concrete channels and drainage, and then some measures include flood and storm forecasting and flood evacuation training programs. On solid waste management, we have 21 city municipalities that have at least one unit of dump truck. Open dumping is common practice of this disposal, but now uh, and there was a closure of this open dump inside. And then this establishment of sanitary landfill uh, is proposed for cluster of municipalities. The record of AMB provincial office, 16 of 23 uh, municipalities, non political government units have submitted their same closure and rehabilitation plan. On poverty incidents, threshold and insurance of income. Our poverty incidence among families by province is sad to know that we are still the highest in the region. But, but uh, if you notice, we are the also highest in the uh, reducing the poverty incidence. Uh, in 2021, from 14.9%, we have reduced it to 29.4% relatively high. Uh, the global is the highest in the region, but we have also uh, reduced it relatively. On uh, poverty incidence by population, from 49.5%, we have reduced it to 37.7%. This is due to the efforts of all stakeholders spearheaded by the provincial government in all the PPEs that will address poverty in our province. So our main source of, main source of income emanates from the uh, entrepreneurial or family operating activities which is composed of 42.6% and then 24.2% from salaries and wages 32.2% from other sources. So this is a lot of use of fiscal framework. Our uh, agriculture, we have 165,215 hectares which are uh, composed of 37.7%. Forest, 135,439 hectares so equivalent to 30.2%. Grassland, shrubland, 130,205 hectares, uh, equivalent to 29.8%. The windland, 
123 cars equivalent to 2 percent and then the built up 4,049 cars equivalent to 1 percent. This is our uh, general land use map, although it's uh, quite uh, uh, small, but and then we, did, we have the agricultural areas, agricultural areas one, two, and then uh, shortland areas, built up areas, wetland areas, woodland forest areas. Our framework guides the future physical development of the province and the location of proposed interventions. The framework components are settlements, production, protection, transport, other infrastructure that relate vertically to the regional physical framework plan and the desires and the comprehensive land use plans of the province component, city and municipalities. The spatial strategy for stem summer is dispersed. Concentration which envisions the conglomeration of the non city and 22 municipalities into three clusters, with each cluster having an identified growth center. The three clusters are to be linked by a network of roads, communication facilities, thus promoting mobility, efficient transport of goods and services, and a more efficient exchange of information between and among the centers for a more balanced development in a largely rural city. We can shoot them up on the settlement, uh, uh, the post settlement clusters. So we are there on yellow, uh, the major urban centers. And the yellow with red, the major urban center and capital city. This is how we post settlement clusters. On center, central cluster, it includes uh, Bulungan City as the major urban center that covers Ernawi, Llorente, Barangayan, Maidulong, Sanolian, Sulanata. On the northern cluster, it includes Dolores as the major urban center that covers Panabit, Oras, Maslong, Ipapat, San Polycarpo, and Arpeci. And then on the southern cluster, the major urban center is Giwan, that includes Mercedes, San Celo, General, MacArthur, Kinapunda, Nipolas, Baraniga, and Lawa. There are also are identified development uh, zones and centers. On the economic development zone, the one frame includes the central cluster. Borunga, Medolong, Sanonia, and then Southern Cluster, Iwan, Marcelli, Salcedo, Northern Cluster, Dolores, Dolores, Alaska, and Abbe. This cluster has emerging growth centers in the province due to its strategic locations. Rapid growth is extended in these clusters, especially Borunga, considering that it is the province capital and major urban center of the province's political, economic, social and educational activities. Its new political status is first rapid development in the infrastructure and economic sectors. Tourism development zone, we include all the, the clusters considering that the province is bestowed with last multiple environment resources, biodiversity conservation, through the development of friendly ecotourism sites will be focused on these clusters. And we have also the agricultural production zone uh, in congruence and in consonance with our uh, area where almost uh, one half of our land area is devoted to agriculture. We have the, the uh, all clusters we devoted also the agricultural production zone. The livestock and poultry production also will be covered to all clusters. And then the fishery development zone will be covered to all clusters, of course, except the hinterland areas of Maslow and the Papa. Because this is, these areas in our province is rich in aquamarine resources. 
the postal Dipsy areas of the municipality of Kinapundang to Dolores to Iwan, Salcedo, Maidulong, or considered the Tuna Highway of the region. The direct resources in these municipalities are facing the Pacific Ocean and the Philippine Sea, the Tuna Beach tribes. A beach port complex similar to that of Jinsan is proposed for establishment. Our prime development zone, we have uh, Iwan Salcedo and Southern Cluster, Malaguita, Poros, Oriente, Central Zone, Boronca, Medolo, Zanoya, Northern Zone, or Asuka, Kaminta. But of course, this is in consonance with the regulatory policies that uh, is espoused by the provincial government, especially the provincial ordinances related to this. On industrial development zone, we have clustered municipalities on central cluster, southern cluster, and northern cluster. Burungla, Maidolo, Malangkai, and Sanonia includes and the central cluster. Southern cluster covers B1, Mercedes, and Zedo. Northern cluster covers Dolores, Dolores, Oras, and Tabak, Tanari. Uh, we can uh, more progress with the establishment of an industrial zone where uh, it can be established in these cluster municipalities strategically located, identified in the cluster because of its promising economic vibrancy, appropriate investments such as skills of trading, technology transfer, adoption of brilliant management practices, economic diversification and cluster, population will be poor in these clusters. So, our uh, production land use includes the tourist parks, production, agricultural land, municipal boundaries, and then the industrial. So, uh, we, as we all know, our uh, production land use as defined by Sarote, Professor Sarote is the property, patrimony, and territory production land use refers to the direct and indirect utilization of land resources for crop production, fishery, livestock, poultry, timber, and of forestry, industry, and tourism. Lands under this category includes agricultural areas, coastal and marine zones, production forest, mineral lands, industrial and tourism development areas. Protection land use refers to the rehabilitation, conservation, management of sensitive critical ecosystem to preserve their integrity, to allow degraded resources to regenerate and to break, protect the human population from environmental hazards. Protection land use covers the following protected areas, NIPAS, non-NIPAS, and hazard-prone areas. Infra development component is an attempt provide the support infrastructure and services to the identified major programs on the province. The focus of this component is the provision of basic facilities that are supportive of the economic and social development trust of the province. This includes the development of airports. And then we have also the quarry seaports, the top hydro, the terminals, where it is uh, strategically located in the entire clusters of municipalities in the province. Our key development issues. On settlement issues, population increase in the province of urban centers, prime agricultural lands being threatened by land use conversion, particularly in the absence or in implementation of a local soil ordinance. So, it is imperative that all of our component LGUs must have this favorite topic of CEOPs. Uh, we have identified, we are reviewing some of the CEOPs uh, in our component cities, city and municipality, some really are violating these uh, issues. And, uh, 
they are very, sometimes they are pushed against the wall. And it needs uh, will, not only political, to really find it out that they are encroaching now the prime agricultural lands because of land conversion without uh, the necessary regulatory policies and the civil duties. Another settlement issue, the deterioration of the environment in urban centers, including possible encroachment on protected and environmentally constrained or unsafe areas is also a major development issue. On production land use, under crop lands, we have can develop in areas that large area used as crop lands that suffers from low productivity as evidenced by low production volume of these import crops. The low production and productivity level could be traced to the low level of technology being used by farmers, lack of irrigation and farming pools. The relatively small farm sizes and the limited good arable land, the predominantly mountainous and hilly terrain of the province, limited agricultural production, and the intensity of cultivation of crop diversification. The substantially eroding condition of the private soils also contributes to low productivity. On fishing grounds, the province fishing resources have been steadily deteriorated through the years. Its coastal zone has been subjected to linear fishing and overfishing with the attendant structure of coral reefs and mountains. Sedimentation and sedimentation resulting from the sound of the cultural forestry policies, mismanagement of watershed, conversion of mountain swamps, and the aquaculture activities have contributed to the widespread damage of the marine environment. On production that use, Rapan and Alberna, both products can continue to be exported to see for another major open sectors of the country. Local processing of forest products to other crops or forest chores has been minimal. The integrated social forestry program and the CB are in program and similar communities. Forestry programs need to be fully implemented. All mining areas, there is a proliferation and small scale mining activities in the municipalities of Maduro, Llorente, and Nani, General Macarthur, Saxena, B1, and Informers. But now it is at rest. Uh, there is no proliferation and small scale mining in the area these areas. The mineral resources of the province have remained largely untapped because of the lack of the term exploration to determine the location and volume of minerals. Tourism areas, the tourism potential of the province has yet to be fully tapped as income and employment source. The province and all municipalities have not adapted tourism plans that will guide them in tourism development. But now there are uh, component NGOs that are uh, submitted to uh, tourism development plans. On infrastructure, the infra facilities of the province are still inadequate to support its economic and social development efficiently. And then provincial roads and bridges in Nepal, television, ports and airports have been constructed, rehabilitated and improved. Power and communication facilities have improved and expanded to serve the growing requirements of both people and industry. About all the construction and rehabilitation of, it, of this infrastructure shall be made disaster resilient. Uh, again, uh, to emphasize, we have done the top hydro uh, operating and then the Amandaraga power, uh, power hydro will soon be uh, rehabilitated. The production land use, forest lands outside of the integrated protected area system could be used as production forest to serve the longer needs of the province and the wood needs of the industry. And then the tourism development areas shall center on the development of ecotourism, historical and cultural characteristics of Eastern Sama. And then we have uh, municipalities 
that uh, maybe in Paris to adopt land use plans and tourism development master plans that the vignette environmentally set tourism zones and prescribe development uh, tourism development standards. On roads, the presently isolated inland municipality of Maslo can only be reached through the Dolores River, but now it can be reached to uh, land when the uh, condition is not uh, uh, rainy. Uh, but uh, soon it will be uh, fully constructed. The, the lowest can have it must not be. The solar port environment will permit Jews and be developed as a national port in order to connect the province to the nautical highway and the commercial trading and centers of the country. We want also uh, alternate, alternate uh, ports from E1 Mercedes and San Sido down to Medrudo. The future ports of Morocco and E1 and Moras shall be upgraded and improved, including the installation of cargo handling facilities. The Morocco airport shall be upgraded to accommodate commercial jet. Uh, as at the moment, as I said, we have only two uh, trips from uh, Moronga to Cebu, Monday and Friday. But you can uh, uh, also have a trip from Moronga, Cebu to Manila on these days. Okay, I will show you. And on potable water, we have also all municipalities shall have level three water facilities. So on the developed issues and imperatives, we have these uh, uh, several uh, uh, steps. Our goals of economic development to increase food production for food security and improve the quality of agricultural products for market competitiveness, to promote agribusiness industries and ecotourism and attract both foreign and domestic investment in the province, to reduce the uh, disaster risk uh, and the effects of climate change in the province. Income, economic employment, service and access and poverty, to provide sustainable and safe livelihood and employment opportunities and real income to the people who still summer. On social services, to provide adequate, relevant, and equitable basic social services to the people of Eastern Samara and to strengthen the awareness of Eastern Samarans on the RCC to avoid casualties in time of disasters and calamities. We have also goals of environment, physical resources, land use, and product services in this institutional development. Our strategies, our main strategies, focus on the drivers and symptoms of development but with particular emphasis on people, economic, environment, and impact development that should drive the province to development. So our PPS includes economic development, price of sufficiency, other product diversification, livestock and poultry production, and we have some PPEs. Uh, and also PCIM production, and then we have investment promotion program. Recently we conducted the tourism and investment forum attended by uh, all stakeholders and then with the presentation of Ambassador Rich Berlong uh, on the uh, potentials of the investment imperatives of uh, Eastern Samar. We have the market development program, small and medium industry credit program, eco tourism development program, land and enterprise development program. On social development, we have upgrading of hospitals and all other necessary sub uh, PPEs for the social development. We have also uh, PPEs of environment protection and environment, transport in abilities and institutional development. To summarize it up, our uh, PPEs uh, for investment programming covers 
50 million, 550 million, similar to 2000. That uh, covers also economic, social, infrastructure, DRRA, environment, and institutional. Thank you, and may God bless us always in all our quarantine activities. Well, about the present, your compliance payments. Kasi, uh, we received uh, notices of uh, comments from the different agencies, and we are waiting up to the last hour kung ano ang mga comments. And we tried out to comply it with the uh, corresponding uh, pages kung saan uh, makikita. Pero yung aming nakumpay, of course, yung nare-receive lang namin na ito yung notice. Kasi the NEDA, it serves all the airports na kinoperate yung mga agency. Sana yung mga comments ninyo. So, uh, as far as we've got, ito lang muna. Kung mayroong iba, we will try it out to comply with the help of Ma'am Camille. Kasi palaging matulungin ito si Ma'am Camille. Sana magpalaing ka palaging minuloy. So, from the DO findings, review findings, ito yung compliance metrics namin. So, under the letter A, ang kanilang uh, uh, recommendation, mayroon itong kindly uh, refer to that as this DAO sitting uh, proposed. Uh, is and rewards, no inclusion of pipeline power generation, transmission, and distribution project in the draft EDP. We have complied it under page 230 of our uh, EDP. And then the EDP has an inclusion of hydro power potential in Amanda for Mandarana Falls in the municipality of Nawahan. It's just a potential capacity of 40 megawatts. DOAB Pumaps can have conducted desktop research for potential site for research uh, development and comments that development. Comply under, uh, and it is included under page 230. So, for biomass energy, Based on the agricultural data provided the PDPT, trans, corn, and coconut are the main agricultural products of the province. The residues from these crops can be used as biomass feedstocks to generate heat and power. Compliant the recommendation and included in page 230. The, uh, that also includes for solar energy. So on the DNR, we have also raised the compliance of the recommendation included in phase one of the from the DOA title. This is now from DOD, uh, DOA uh, uh, title. So, uh, the Tomorrow Journal Plan and will be by the way, operated by the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines. It is your future significance. So, we have complied with the corrected page 229. Uh, the CIDRA, no presentation marks for pipeline energy projects. Complied, see page 231. From the private sector review findings, so we have our compliance matrix. The latest population, population data used in facing and not facing 2020. We have corrected and updated using PC 220 data. The overall, overall, uh, overall, overall map political boundaries does not match the base map political boundaries. Therefore, resulting area resulting game re reference may not represent the actual area desired. 
So, meron pang page 150 na na-identify yung ating private sector, si EMP, engineer government sa Luwa. So, we have complied all their requirements and then uh, it is uh, included in the PSA sheet files and overlaying the DNR sheet files in the maps. Uh, again, we didn't need that as uh, uh, manifested by our visa representative in the Sanoa and we have complied and corrected updated using PSD 15 data. On this should we be findings now? No. Pero pagtulungan naman ako ay sila may findings. So, we are there. Comments. The plan uh, has a clearly uh, de defined the role of the province. Although the province envisions an economy and agriculture and ecotourism, it was not protected in the vision statement. However, they identified the uh, development trust to appropriate considering the foreign resource development strength of Western Summer, its dominant economic sectors, agriculture, fishery, and forestry with allocation, ocean, and 535, the very highest in the region. So, we have complied under page 183. Uh, and the explanation now in uh, in accordance with the uh, comments as uh, complied. Uh, so, with that, uh, we can uh, really decide from page 181 that uh, we can uh, we have complied also. So, another, the provided policy direction on production. So, on production, we are from the page 239. And then, number two, we are from also page 249. The clustering of municipalities for agriculture and fishery production development, north cluster, uh, central cluster, and south cluster. On protection, we have complied also with page 254. And then uh, uh, we have also complied with page 250 to 251. We have complied also with page 254 to 255. On settlements, we have complied also uh, Please see page 247 and then uh, please see page 190 and please see page 211. All infrastructure, we have complied please see page 235 and then uh, we have complied also again page C 248, please see page 259. And then the uh, physical framework and physical framework plan is the optimum translation of the province seat goals for settlement land use and infrastructure development. Along with this, are the comments provide framework, then uh, the plan has not provided framework maps to guide the utilization and for production, protection, settlement, and impact. Although there are maps provided for settlements, agriculture, or forest land, the necessary elements were not included. Moreover, the maps presented, the documents are not the same as the presentation maps. So we have to apply this. This is page 252, this is page 256, and then this is page 246. And then on infra, 
meal production from local sources for aquaculture. Okay. For the province of Leyte, uh, we thank you for the comments and specifically we would like to uh, represent this. That they said that the Eastern Summer PGPFP is aligned with the National Government's Trust, uh, the Dabishan Nadi 140 and the RDP. And they also said that the parameters mentioned for the review of the PGPFP are only for NJR members and nothing mentioned for LG. But this pertains to the MC 2021 And in the planning environment, please also include a discussion of the uh, the gross provincial domestic product or uh, PSA also call it, calls it as provincial product accounts. Uh, the release for the 2022, but this is also already scheduled for Eastern summer this November. So please use the latest available data. And also, next piece to provide a discussion on the hierarchies of existing urban centers according to functional hierarchy based on the population size and functions. And also, the need to revisit the policy recommendations because there are a few that are already considered strategies and activities. And finally, a province of Lake says that the PDPFP of Eastern Summer is bound to be compliant with the national standards and PL10 guidelines. And Province of Leyte highly recommends the endorsement and approval of the R loop, subject to the inclusion of all the other comments which are submitted. Next, please. Now, these are the general recommendations of the of NEDA, NEDA. Uh, first one is that uh, the Eastern Sum RPPP is found consistent with the PDP and the RPP 2023 to 2028. Okay, it provides a comprehensive assessment of the planning environment and the corresponding strategies incorporating also the DRRCCA. But nevertheless, consider trimming down some detailed discussions and descriptions and putting more emphasis on strategic development direction of the province. So it is also found to be aligned with the BSDF 2015 to 2045. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the development of three major urban centers in the province and of course, uh, the municipalities of Tulong is one and of Boronga. Next please. It is found to be in harmony with the PDPFP of Northern Samar and Samar, particularly in protecting and preserving the SINP. And also it has the PDPFP of Eastern Samar already includes a summary matrix of the goals, objectives, and targets, and the corresponding strategies, programs, and projects as prescribed in the PLPAM volume 2. And of course, the location, implementation, priority, or time frame of responsible entity should also be indicated in the Eastern Summer PDPFP. And similar with the province of data, to use the latest and updated data on the discussions, because some of which are a bit outdated. Okay, next please. And Speaking of data, to ensure that the data sources and mock maps are properly attributed. So the sources and references of the maps, for example, tsunami data is not generated by NGP, but by EOSTP box. And also the province may consider utilizing the new joint memorandum circular which was released just in January 2023. So MC number 2023-001, series of 2023 are the interim guidelines on the formulation of the PDPFP in enhancing the PPFP because uh, the MC shall be in effect for three years. That means until 2026. Or until the harmonized PDPFP formulation guidelines issuance. And there is also a recommendation for a midterm update as prescribed in this memorandum circular. Okay, and for the next, for the specific comments uh, regarding the development issues, goals, and objectives, it is recommended that each indicator must have baseline data and end of plan target for measurable results of monitoring, evaluation, and replanning. So the province can refer to the results matrices or the RM of the Eastern Visayas Regional Development Plan on how you can improve the scorecard. And of course, to also include, if possible, the annual milestones, targets, 
means of verifications, the departments or entities responsible for generating the set report. It should also be re reflected in the PDPFP. Next, on the strategies, programs, projects, and activities, uh, please provide information on the annual investment requirements, for instance, on funds, implementing of this, uh, the location and the output or outcome desired for each program or project. And in a resource-based monitoring and evaluation to formulate a results matrix of the various programs and projects envisioned to be implemented within the 10-year period to guide the monitoring of your plan. Okay, next. Um, Okay, this one on, are the comments of the DILG from the parameters within the purview of the DILG. They are all found compliant, meaning that the programs and projects within the PDPFP are found to be essential for the promotion of the general welfare of the province, that the programs and projects are actual, the actual translation of the province needs and requirements. And also that the proposed implementing and monitoring schemes are consistent with the new local government code and are in consistent with the revenue code, environment code, and investment and administrative code to aid implementation of the plan. Next, please. It is also found to be uh, no back. Oh, yes, it is also found to be adequate and sufficient. In terms of the proposed organizational structure, it also evaluates the sources of funds of the identified programs and of the PDPFP via the approved agency land use and related policies. This is uh, with the PALG. Now, uh, earlier, Sir Jojo says, uh, talks, talked about the POE. Let me just reiterate some of the comments. Uh, it was not initially found compliant with the proposed uh, pipeline energy projects and the recommendations are to put in transmission and power generation transmission and distribution projects. As for the transmission projects, the BOE is specified on which areas and of course in coordination with the NGCP and the transmission projects. Next slide please, on the distribution projects, for the coordination of the ESA Melco and also with the distribution development plan of the ESA Melco. Uh, uh, we can do away with this uh, and yes. we present the one candidate. So are you done with Veda's comments? Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, no, uh, the other ones are with the HSUD and I mentioned So, okay. Now, you made that was not. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, thank you so much, Veda. Uh, uh, so this is the one, this is the set of comments that you did not receive. No, I wonder why the, the transmitter was addressed to the governor attention. Did you follow up? Yes, sorry, because I'm going to have a transmitter to the governor. There is no copy of it. So all this, if you got to have if you have personal email, you can check it and in the office email, you can check it out in the last moment. Maybe it will be able to overlook it. But we will comply immediately upon our return, even if it is in the afternoon, we will do it. You will be compliable. Okay, thank you. So, uh, The floor is now open to additional comments from the members. Yes, sir. I think speaking from on behalf of the Though our director of the Kenyan Pursuit is a very alternate member of the Parliament, but I have to mention my dear with regards to the presentation of Mr. Samar. Uh, with regards to the land use plan, I'm not sure if I miss out some data that you have presented with regards to the data about the percent uh, land conversion, the same from agricultural land into city museum or into other establishments in the province, land conversion. So, 
So the second comment is uh, this with regards to the activity of the number of existing activity and their classification. So among this activity are in to retail or manufacturing or any other classification of business. And uh, I am happy that uh, I have presented about the uh, industrial development area or uh, economic area in Kusun. But we need to, uh, I will suggest that any data identification with regards to potential. So you have presented three principalities that have potential for uh, business uh, just like in Kusun. So because the USD is uh, preparing for the implementation of uh, knowledge, innovation, science, and technology parks for the Kusun. So you would like to maybe collaborate with you from the province or from the state counties and universities with regards to potential establishment that is potential in Kusun in the province. And my last comment is with regards to the development issue, uh, maybe to include in the PPFP of the province, the technology of innovation uh, issue or adoption of the province because I have not seen in the presentation the profile, technology profile, what are the technologies that you are using or you may be uh, used in the future. Maybe in operation or from any other uh, sector. Thank you, Pino. All of it.
it is essentially generous than this.
Kasi naabutan kasi siya ng transition, no? Uh, new administration, so it took a while before PBBM signed the SPA. Kaya na-delay din yung take-off ng project. So they have a pending, when I say they, GIZ has a pending uh, request for extension and as Anna mentioned, that we just reiterate, in case ma-approve ma and request for extension, it will not end in 2025, but rather it will extend up to 2027. And this is around, this is uh, more or less 300 million pesos. No? This is a lot of help to uh, the region, especially to the three pilot uh, provinces, which, by the way, have been approved, as mentioned, mainly Northern Samar, Samar, and, and Southern Asia. So uh, we're really looking forward to the positive impact of this project. And as again, may I reiterate, the reason why we're putting this on the table of the RLOOC is because the RLOOC is the regional steering committee for the project. We did not any more to eat, you know? uh, I think most of you will recall. Uh, this was an agreement uh, last year you know, when we had our second semester meeting at uh, Ritz Tower. XYZ. Actually, I'm not imagine XYZ. Okay. So, uh, we look forward to more, more action. <laughs> By the way, it was mentioned in the presentation that I was part of the team no, that uh, had a study mission to Germany. Wow. Salamat to you, Madam, for the opportunity. And uh, let me just share a very brief ano lang, feedback, share, ano lang, sharing lang ito, what we saw in Germany. Um, <laughs> it's Philippines, it's not to say, no? Every time I uh, visit another country, I always have that feeling na makaluluoy ng Philippines. But syempre, that's understandable because we're still uh, developing no? compared to the others who are already much ahead of us. They have lots of money to spend and less, much less uh, people to take care of. They have, I uh, group was, uh, they have a lot of vanity projects kasi dami tira kwarta ka ka so soon. So, sobra sobra kung talaga in resources. Like, just to cite one example, nagwirao tira in river, kaya nagkamay ala flooding, which affected three households. So they spent a lot of money to rechannel the river para hindi na ma-open So ganun. And they have a very high-end uh, out, out of this world na, ano, na irrigation system. Na, can you imagine, para yung bagayang lake Titirok ni Ratubi and uh, this is collected from the wastewater coming from the, I forgot the, bumubagan din niya ito, sugar cane in Agra, di ba? So they have this, I think, sweet berry na, na ira product pa, farm product, tapos mag-harvest niya na din, ma-manufacture niya na. And wastewater, take note, it's not wastewater coming from the sewerage. No, from their toilets and their set. No, it's not that. And wastewater, tika na na extract na juice into a fruit. And the amount of water collected is so huge. No, it, maybe muna yung abagan lake. And of course, they have a system. Uh, it's connected to a complicated machine and that provides irrigation. Yes, and they have rich, they have rich groundwater. I think uh, their groundwater is, uh, as a source, no, is richer than their uh, surface water. So, isang pera na ka, buti lang ang pag-ukam, nakaka-uha na lang tayo, nakaka-extract na tayo ng water. And in terms of uh, shore protection and flood mitigation projects, very much amazing. In the city of Bamberg, Bagan, bagan, 
you can just imagine ha, you can Google it, you can YouTube it. Gravity Rabanan Multi-Layer so that ang nakalilihan si level in case mag-warn na din ano, kasi the warn warning system is really early enough no, for people to evacuate. And take note, ito nga ano, ha, along the sea level na establishments, these are actually more of tourist establishments, restaurants, mga entertainment places, and they have parks where, you know, Germans and even visitors, they love the sun. <laughs> they love to do sunbathing. So, na really good there in the tooth bench, and to be in a syrup during summer. So, can you imagine to make a flooding? So, there's this early warning uh, system that they have. And they hire people to, to do the uh, closing of the tooth, to let people evacuate immediately to a higher level. So, depending on the projection kung naroon kahataas, magiging kahataas ng tubig, no, uh, storm surge or whatever it is, na uh, na-sourcing flood, na na-projekt kasi nira. So, masa nira, amin yung kameters. So, kung maaabot ka na, hindi ka higit higher level. But if it goes beyond that level, second level, medyo pa nira, huro taas ka kakagtuan. And they have this, they have this uh, parang cultural center of the Philippines, but it's multi-story. I forgot how many stories. And uh, they, they let people, kung nataas na ko din durot ba, they let, let all the people who happen to be in that city, who, be, who, who might be affected, go up there, no? Because it's very, very tall. And uh, concert is being held while the people <laughs> are held up, no? Until the flood subsides. So, ganun po ang insura. And then, uh, yung mga establishments na nasa sea level, they have this thick, uh, uh, it cannot be penetrated by water. No? It's made of uh, glass, thick, very, very thick glass. And as I said, they hire people to, ano, I think it's the government that hires them to, itiro na trabaho is pansara, pansara, pansara. So that the owners of the establishments can already run for their lives. And I, and I can imagine these people are highly trained no, how to do it as quick as they can. So, pag abot hit tubig in Baha, waray na, it's really, ano, the, the, the area is empty. So, ganun po ka, ka high-tech graphic. And they have also short protection program, of course. So, you're uh, very amazing. Ang good sa nung pagkita mga kasunga nito. <laughs> Yung it, it flooding affects already several uh, LGUs, no, several municipalities that we approach pa hiyang at to events to natakot na hiyang interprovincial boundaries, diba? That's why we have this project. Okay? Okay, so, so much for that. Okay, that's just for information. Mom, uh, yes, since uh, this is uh, just a pilot project, uh, is there a possibility that it will be extended to other provinces? <laughs> I uh, cannot answer to for now, but we can we can relay that question to Andrea. But I'm sure Andrea will not have already answer. Maybe it will depend on how well we do with this. Para kasi itong magaling pilot plan, di ba? To the three provinces. So hopefully, kung ma okay and then. Uh, it will be part of the end of project recommendations, maybe, uh, to extend to the three other provinces. For now, yun lang talaga ang kaya ng resources. But you know, we are a favorite of GIZ, no? We have been a recipient of many GIZ uh, uh, projects in the past. Capacity building pala kasama kayo. Even those who are Building, uh, we will try to cover those kind of uh, projects. It's good enough, kind of, but you want the sources now, so maybe people will just try to work out. So, that, yeah, that would imply that if you're in the area, you will have to then that means you can do it on your own. So maybe the answer to your question earlier is a no. Kasi magkakaya naman ni Yuri, di ba? Ayun na lang ako pag-attend. No, 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 no
I'm just kidding. Okay, sige. Uh, my wife's chair, do you have any comments? No comment. Okay, sige. I think, uh, what's the pleasure of the body? Kasi meron pa tayong dalawang, uh, tatlong items, rather. In less than five minutes. In less than five minutes. Uh, less than five minutes each. Okay, sige. So, kaya natin matapos in a, oh yeah, let's uh, finish everything na lang, ano? And then, we end the meeting with a Santos lunch because it's from the Santos Santos Nakita. Okay, sige. So now, uh, may I call on Miss Anna Marie Camille Bantakulo of the school to present the status of the CLB preparation in the region. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, good morning, everyone. Allow me to report the status of the Comprehensive Land Use Plan Preparation or Updating by the 143 LTUs of the region. So this is as of November 2020. So since it's been a month and So next slide, please. So as you can see, we have um, three status tests. We have the OCLUP for updating and the updating. So for the low CLDP, we have 20 out of 143 LGUs or 14% who have no CLDP meaning why talaga nila comprehensive land use plan or zoning ordinance ever since. So it is uh, for Bihiran, we have 0, Eastern Summer 3, for Leyte 1, Northern Summer 4, for Summer Province 10, and for Southern Leyte. Updating, uh, we have 65 LGUs out of 143, or 45%. So five of which from the Iran, uh, Eastern Summer 11, Leyte 20, Northern Summer 15, Summer 2, and uh, for Southern Leyte as well. For updated CLUPs and zoning ordinances, we have 58 out of 143 LGUs, or 41%. Uh, coming from the Iran, 3 LGUs, from Eastern Samar, 9, from Leyte, 22, for, from Northern Samar, 5, from Samar, 14, and from Southern Leyte, 5. Next slide, please. So here are the recently approved uh, CLUPs for the year, so as of November 2023. So first off, we have from La Pisale, Northern Summer, was approved August 2023. Santa Fe, Lite, second one, approved uh, April 18, 2023. From Sogod, Southern Lite, uh, approved last February 6, 2023. From Malitbo, Southern Leyte, approved last May, 20, May 2, 2023. Um, the latest one, LGU Mondragon, approved last October 13, 2023. Dauang, Northern Samar, approved last January 27, 2023. San Roque, Northern Samar, approved last June 15, 2023. From the province of Samar, we have Nabangan, approved last May 14, 2023. And from Eastern Samar, LG Pinabundan, approved last September 2023. So we have, for 2023, we have a total of nine LGs with recently approved CLDs. So, next slide, please. So we have here uh, the CLUPs under PILO Kirby, meaning the, the PILO na po sila, the Provincial Land Use Committee. Uh, so the LGUs are just complying with the comments of the PILO. So first, we have the Bayo City. They haven't uh, complied back with the comments of the PILO. Uh, we're just waiting. Second, the Palogan. Uh, Third, San Antonio Northern Summer. So San Antonio Northern Summer has no approved CLUP. So it's good na nasa pilong level na sila. So we're just uh, uh, assisting them in complying with the comments of the pilong From later, we have Alguera. The 
was la uh, the date of review was last July 21, 2023. Next, we have the LGU's Thomas Office Padre Borgos. As you can see there, uh, we had a marathon review, peer review in Southern Naked. So, sinabay po si Thomas Opos and Padre Borgos. Um, also, San Juan, Southern Naked. Yes, and Biloan, Imasawa, and Himindayan. So, uh, and Silago also. So, para po halos one week kami na sa Southern Naked for the marathon peer review. Uh, Early feedback of the PTO Southern Cape, Padre Burgos has complied with the comments of the PTO. So, um, as a SP, somebody up and allow it to go. So, soon, again, okay, uh, uh, by December, ma approved na sila. Uh, the latest one, we conducted a couple of months So, uh, the review was last October 17, 2020. Next slide, please. So, I mentioned that. We, have, we still have 20 LGUs with no approved CLUPs. So, um, sadly, kita po ito pinakala po ha, all Philippines na no CLUP. Yes. So, as you can see, we have uh, four from Northern Samar, Kapul, San Antonio, Mapanas, and Sibino Lobos. But Kapul and San Antonio, the review na natiyo, they're just complying with the comments of um, one in Leyte, sa nalang po, Mallorca. So, I hope you uh, help us with this because uh, they have an internal problem with the, uh, ano na lang, uh, public hearing. Hindi po na ka public hearing, but the, the draft, the andyan na po, okay na po sila. And Mallorca is a UNDP Rapid Assisted Project. So, I hope po, maaano na mag-facilitate na po yung public for uh, Southern Leyte, we have two, San Francisco and San Ricardo. So, uh, si San Francisco, they are uh, uh, going on formation. In San Ricardo, nasa zoning na po kami, we're assisting them. We have a moment with San Ricardo. Uh, for Eastern Samar, we only have three, Tamasur Jojo, Ipapad, General MacArthur, and Balanita. For Samar, province of Samar, we have 10. So I hope the province of Samar will help us because uh, ano, kulang din po kami sa funds when it comes to uh, uh, capacity building. So uh, let's work together in assisting them. Although some of these LGUs um, nasa pilong level na. So ano po, uh, complying with the comments na lang. So we have here Tabacolan, um, Almagro, Santo Nino, Sumaraga, Talalora, Matudinao, San Jose de Juan, Pagsanghan, San Sebastian, and Pinapagdao. LGUs, Pagapulan, Santo Nino, and Pagsanghan, nasa pilok level na, so they're just complying with the comments. Um, while others like Almagro, um, Sumaraga, Pinapagdao, and Matudinao, medyo initial cases pa lang sila. So, uh, we hope to focus our efforts in those LGUs. Next slide, please. So, as you can see here, um, we have here the trend of the uh, status, the LGUs status. So, uh, we were uh, requested by the Argo, I think, last September 2023 for the LED status report. So as you can see, uh, from fourth quarter 2020 until November 2020, improved na naman tayo sa so, those LED. So from 24 LGUs, naging 20 na lang. For uh, updating, um, last uh, uh, for fourth quarter 2023, 2020, I mean, we have 75 LGUs. By the end of uh, November 2020, 65 na lang. So for the updated, um, improving naman, fourth quarter 2020 is 45 LGUs, uh, increasing ang um, uh, approval, so 49, 2021, 2022, 2022, September 2023, we have 57 LGUs, and for November 2023, we have 58, so we have to approve CLUs. Next slide, please. So, 
So we have here the CLUD status of foreign assisted LGU, specifically the Asia Development Bank. So we have three provinces that has been assisted by ADB. For Leyte, 17 LGUs, 7 out of 17 has been approved, it's updated, while 10 out of 17 is still for updating. Next slide, please. For um, Samar, we have four LGUs who have been assisted by ADB. Um, one has no CLUT, Telenora, while the three others have been approved or updated. For Eastern Summer, we have nine LGUs. Uh, one has no CLUP, General MacArthur. Three has been updated or approved. My Dolom, Pinakundan, and Balakayan. While five LGUs are still updated. So, um, uh, don't worry, we saw this has been conducted, conducting a lot of the technical assistance. Um, maybe mentoring or training every week for this company or other LGUs have been calling us asking for technical assistance. Um, uh, tumutulo naman kami or ano lang, our problem lang is we cannot um, train uh, LGUs because of the lack of funds. So, lahat po is um, uh, LGU funded or project funded or province uh, funded capacity building. So we have been um, requesting for additional budget in the CLUB assistance, CLUB training from our central office, in the RTC, in the, oh, all of that, we have been requesting for additional budget, especially for those L the 20 LGUs who have been approved CLUBs. As to the PDP, sige ko lang ha, uh, as to the PDPFP, we have three na, 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 na pending, uh, Summer, Bigiran, and Northern Summer. All are still complying with the second review, the second review uh, comments of the central office. So, minor na lang po, more on maps na lang, map elements, uh, inclusion of the interventions based on the CCADRR, the mga assessment. And uh, after that, we are targeting by December to approve for at least two out of three. So that's all for my report on the CLUP status of the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, Camille. No, I, I think that's good news. No? Uh, much improved status compared to the previous one presented. So we love to have the I think we have to give credit to the Sud, no? led by no less So obviously, this is an effect of the Sud's creation and uh, presence in Region B. But sana hindi tayo maging top nature. Uh, kasi top nature pa rin tayo sa no CLUP no? in the country. Uh, although I'm not praying for the other regions to so <laughs> But it's still not good news pag ganon. Sige. So, um, in terms of funding, kasi parang uh, I get the impression that it's really money, no? money matters. Uh, so, siguro ang ating, especially summer, Jeff is here, no? Uh, maybe you can uh, advocate to the governor to include in your next year's budget. Kasi sampo, sampo pa sila. No? So, kayo ang top nature sa region. Diba? Uh, that's um, over, I uh, know, much, much above majority no, of the 20 na na walang CLUP si Venture, kayo yung nakakarami. So, uh, kasi tinig na na, I was whispering to, uh, to the Vice Chair, sabi ko, hindi naman lahat, di ba, island municipalities na talagang mahirap tuntahan. Sabi ni RD, kinonfirm niya na, oo, oh, yung iba nga hindi, pero nakagawa naman sila. I mean, yung, yung hindi lahat, it's not the reason na na ilan municipality ka or na gila ka na hindi ka makagawa ng CLUB. Kasi the others who are also remote, nakagawa din naman sila. No? So, maybe it's money also, the L municipal LGU does, does not have the financial
financial resources. How much ba ang ano, more or less yung customs for, for them to be assisted? Actually, we have three, three models. <laughs> plus A, B, C. Depends sa uh, availability of funds. It ranges from 2.1 to 2.3. Yun yung kumbaga naka-in-house lahat. So, kunwari, pwede we use the facility of the municipality. Yeah. The we can always innovate. Yes, yes. So, that's why I instructed them to make a three uh, category. Plus A, B, C. So, para di rin maging uh, pasakit. Ano ang right part? Yes, correct. So, if you have this much, okay, you go for A. If you have less and less uh, budget, we go for B. If kulang pa, may na pa, and C. Na kung baga, at least minimal na magagasto. Para wala rin pasakit kay kumasirin. I mean, in budget, mahal din kaya. So, we have uh, three sets. Depending on the uh, availability of facilities, resources, you may not have, mind you, may not have four plus municipality, they budgeted a five million budget for CLUP. And why was given surprise? Napakat to Pasipo, napakat to Pamanila. It makes us do it, cannot be Madiri. Although, as I said, Madiri 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 so, may na iba, nakuha yung konsultan, may na naman iba, hadiri. But, uh, just a caveat, ang mga LGU, nakuha yung konsultan, just make sure, ngayon yung konsultan is really following the guidelines yes. imposed by the department. Kasi may na mga konsultan nga, uh, they just uh, make their own guidelines. So, pag, Pasa ako ng review, only to find out that failed that in a CLUP, nakikramo na doon sa LGU. Kaya wala yung may magpakta. Ano mga puno na ako, that's why we have been advocating na to seek our technical assistance so that we could really guide them. So we enter into a memorandum of agreements para we have something to hold on. Eh kung wala po, pag titikam, makuri ba? Makuha na lang kami yung konsultan. So, natuloy ka delay ang CLUP formulation. So, at least, we are there to guide them slowly but surely. Diba? So, we understand that it's not an overnight undertaking. It is really a painstaking uh, in the board, nabi na ka mga mappers, di ba? So that's a common problem at mappers. O sa alapin na po na mapa, di rin nagtutok pa. So again, another stumbling block. But anyway, we can always find ways as long as we put our hands together. Okay. Thank you very much to our vice chair. Very well said. Yes, Anne. Yes, it's for Yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, since we're talking about funds, let me just share, during the recently conducted um, A4DR Provincial Workshop in Southern Dayton, actually some of the MPDCs um, aired their concern on the um, conduct of trainings in order for them to complete their CMTs. So they highlighted like, the implement, uh, zoning and all that. And then um, we raised this to Andrea that maybe um, this can already be um, incorporated in the our project since once of the output is to integrate yung uh, E4DR in the CLUP but how can we integrate it in the first place? Wala pa naman sila CLUP. Yeah. So they will try to consider, hopefully, they will they can try to uh, consider that in the um, in next year's activity of the project. But only in the pilot project? Um, kanina, initially we said that um, based on our for programming, they said they can extend capacity building. But I think the priority will really be those final areas. Yes. Hopefully, they can expand it later on to those that final areas. So, sana pwede natin umako, kasi malaking tulong. During the summer workshop, I just asked, uh, has 
the issue or the ten Latin uh, CLUs of summer to uh, discuss? Um, yeah, actually, part of the workshop kasi is to um, present the status of the CLUs in the pilot areas. And so, yeah, they identify issues and concerns. So, yun, those were the things I identified. So, hopefully, since we want to address the issues, bakit hindi nila makumpit yung CLUs, hopefully, ma-address nila yun the succeeding activities of the project. Okay, so thank you. So hopefully, let's keep our fingers crossed na in particular to the pilot provinces, no, na especially in summer, mabulidan ka mo na makakompleto ka mo through the reporting our budget. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues of our LGUs, uh, including in your CMD, is the formulation of their uh, seed ground. Yes, climate disaster because um, the data you need, marami po. So you need to uh, pass all your facilities or all your lands, uh, and then uh, you have to uh, overlay it with the hazards and have to conduct the different assessments. So dun sila na nakaano na sa stock. But it is needed. Hindi ko yun na walang sigla CLG. And um, aside from coming up with the report, they have to integrate the results to the CLUP because uh, see, uh, the results of the CEDAR without integrating it to the CLUP in the zoning ordinance is wala, wala siyang natin. So uh, that's why we have to check if aside from the CEDAR report, if uh, they incorporated the results to the CLUP and the zoning ordinance. Yeah, yeah, right, so thank you for uh, your inputs, Camille. In the case of the Papad, kasi di ba, recently, grabe ang flagging dito, Jo, di ba? I hope na consider di hapon niya na in a seat ground, no? I hope also na uh, as people no, prepare the CLUP in their respective areas of jurisdiction, we have, we have this mindset na uh, we are preparing the CLUP not only for compliance, but really more to serve its purpose. Diba? That's why the seed grant, though it's really very difficult to come up with, uh, important talaga yan is critical. No? Kaya kuha din yung physical plan. Okay? So we need to know our, we have to have J-analytics to guide our plan. So that uh, we are RCCA enhanced na na. Diba? So the planning in Eastern Summer, particularly in Ipapan, may naman ba iba joke na akad na and in northern summer, Katarman, no? Was, uh, so, any of the recent events should actually be considered. No? For me, I don't know if you can the updating problem. Because it's not a joke to untangle your account to update anytime. Uh, gusto rabi na lang ato ni update. Kaya na kurya nga ni pag-inu sa ipang mag-update, no? Okay, but actually, updating, I think, is uh, less difficult than coming up with a new one. Okay, may I just uh, give also a piece of advice on the issue of uh, when you when an LGU uh, contracts it out, no? The formulation of the CLUP is contracted to consultant. Actually, Yung compliance to the to the CLUP guidelines can be ascertained by putting it in the terms of reference, which becomes the basis for the preparation of the contract. So dapat specific uh, ano yah osaka provision no? in the TOR in, and in the contract na it should be fully compliant with the CLUP guidelines issued by the school. No, para aware it yung consultant that they should be answerable for that. No? There's a, there should be accountability that if uh, found later on in the review that they have not complied or may mga violations, then uh, that would be tantamount to breach of contract and they can be penalized for that. Diba? So for the LGUs na mag titikang pala kamo and you have a plan to contract it out, uh, then uh, dapat sugar dito tayo ang uh, arrangement. Okay? So, okay. Ano na ba? Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, Siguro ako ang amin sa burong na ito ang procedure process ang nabili kasi hindi natin uh, wala ito sa ito. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, no more? Yeah, thank you so much that we will uh, proceed now to the status of the CXCBP. Hindi pinamantay. Ay, may 
way, nakalimutan ko lang sabihin. Yung last slide kasi, Camille, uh, is on the, uh, it reflects the assistance no, from ADP. I think in succeeding reports, huwag na natin isama ito, no? kasi matagal na yun, uh, pre-Yolanda pa, that time, and it doesn't make sense anymore. Although, based on the presentation, yes, based on the presentation, it's very clear, no? The message is clear na mayroong dalawa na despite the assistance, hindi nila nagawa yung CLUP. And then for updating, yun syempre, naturally, kasi matagal na yung assistance. And meron din naman nakapag-update na. But uh, probably in our succeeding reports, wag na natin yung summary. Uh -oh. Para wala na siya masyadong meeting sa atin. Okay, so for the CTP status, may I request now, uh, Ms. Rubit uh, Roca from the DILG. Good morning, Madam Chair, to the members of the Regional Land User Committee. This morning, I am tasked to present the status of comprehensive development plan formulation in the region. So this is as of October 2022. But before I proceed, uh, allow me to remind everyone, especially those who are first-timers in this meeting, that the comprehensive development plan is anchored in section 106 of the local government code, which provides guidance on the formulation of the multi-stakeholder development plan. Next slide. So as specified in section 106 of the LGC, each local government unit shall have a comprehensive multi-sectoral development plan to be initiated by its development council and approved by its sanguinian. That is why the the Development Council at the Provincial, City, Municipal, and at Baras, the Barangay level shall assist the corresponding Sangunian in the setting of direction of economic and social development in coordinating development efforts within its territorial jurisdiction. Likewise, the Comprehensive Development Plan is a medium-term plan, so meaning it is good for six years. Covering six years, this CDP outlines how the local government units will develop the land allocated for the different uses through priority programs, projects, and activities. And it is expected that from the city and municipality, there is an alignment of the plans formulated up to the national government, geared towards the attainment of the ambition in 2040. So let's take a look with the regional summary as of October 2022. So this is the latest status that we have. Out of the 143 LGUs in the region, 116 have updated or its CDPs are still in effect. It is 84.10%. And there are 15.9% LGUs with outdated or um, ongoing updating of the respective CDPs. So let's take a look with the provincial HUC and ICC data. So for LATE, out of the 41 LGUs, 33 LGUs are still updated for 18.4%, while there are 8 LGUs with outdated CDPs. Among them are the following, Kapokokan, Bulag, Mahapulag, Mayorda, Merida, Palumpon, Tanawan, and Tulawsa. For some related, consistently, they have 100% updated CDPs. And for Bihiran, out of the eight LGUs, five are still in effect and three are outdated. The outdated LGUs are the municipalities of Bikiran, Kaibiran, and Maritiki. For the province of Samar, out of the 26 LGUs, 25 of which are updated, covering 96% of the total number of LGUs in the province, with one outdated LGU in the municipality of Pangsanghan. For Eastern Samar, out of the 23 LGUs, 13 of which are updated, or 52%, and 10 are outdated. They are the following, Balaniga, Balangkayan, Panhavid, B1, Llorente, Salcedo, Mercedes, Ipapan, Ripornos, and Tac. And for the province of Northern Samar, 19 are updated, 
and there are still five no, out of the 24 LGUs. No. They are the following. Katubig, Lapini, Lope de Vega, Macanas, and San Isidro. And for Tacloba and the Formo, they are currently active. So uh, we can say that uh, 27 LGUs no, are outdated. And as of today, no, I have asked no, the latest status as of November, the two LGUs, remaining LGUs with um, not yet started has already started updating no, their CDPs. So since we were also requested to present the ADB assisted LGUs, um, I would like to invite everyone to the next slide with the information that for in the region, we have three provinces and one city covered with the ADB assisted LGUs. So for this 38 LGU beneficiaries, 16 of which comes from Leyte, four of which comes from Samar, nine from Eastern Samar, and from the cities, it's Ormoc City. So out of the 30 ADB assisted LGUs, 28 of which are still in effect or still out updated, well, there are two outdated CDPs, although they are currently updating already. So uh, with this picture, we can say that only in Eastern Samar, the two outdated CDPs comes from the province of Eastern Samar. Next. And these LGUs are the municipalities of E1 and Salcedo. So what were the interventions made by the department to ensure the updating or the drafting of the comprehensive development plans? So we provided technical assistance during the formulation or updating of risk-informed comprehensive development plans. And like this soon, we also have limited budget, no? That is why for this year, we were only able to capacity 12 LGUs. Likewise, we conduct regular monitoring. We does the quarterly monitoring of, in terms of the CDP compliance of the LGUs. And we also conducted the CDP assessment. This is conducted uh, from March to May of the ensuing year after the election. And uh, we present also the status of the CDP reports during the management committee meetings. And we also issue various mutual issuances to ensure CDP compliance as well as monitoring the BILG field officers, including the LGUs. And uh, we requested the provincial offices to write the concerned LGUs no, and to highlight the significance as this is the responsibility in the crafting of the native plan. So that's it for the ILG. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Ms. Rubi. Any questions? Any improvement we have for? Yes, <laughs> and thanks to the ILG as well, no? for helping out our LGUs. Wala na bang tanong? Are we all eager to ano na? To finish the meeting? Okay, and like ano, si LUP, Ms. Rulis, huwag na na yung ano, mga assistant na no? para ano na yung meeting natin, wala na ganyan. Hindi na siya masyadong relevant. Okay, so uh, thank you again so much. We will now move to the last topic for this meeting, which is the 2024 World and Financial Plan to be endorsed to the RDC to come Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Yes, good afternoon once again. I am pleased to present to you the FY 2024 Work and Financial Plan of the Regional Land Use Committee. So next slide, please. So just a brief background here before we proceed to this one. Um, as you know, the RUPA operates under the RDCA if being an adult aid to the full council. And then in 2024, the full council proposed um, a budget of around 11.8 million and um, what was included in the net was only around 7.4 million, so um, more or less 40% slash from what we have proposed. Anyway, um, I'm presenting to you this now, so you will know what are the um, 
activities of course of the R group uh, next year. So same thing, we will be conducting um, two semestral uh, meetings, first and second quarter. Um, but then again, um, if there is a need to meet uh, via message, we can do so. And also we are targeting to conduct uh, technical assistance to provinces, especially in the formulation or updating of their PDPFPs. So um, we're targeting around four workshops or meetings. So you will see there the total proposed budget around 91,000. But um, given the limited funds nga, the full council, we are very much happy to ano, um, accept sponsorship, especially from our LGUs, from the provinces and even our regional line agencies. So maybe from the provinces, it's also an opportunity for us to be able to visit the province and conduct the meeting there. So um, it's 91,000, pero kung titignan nyo per meeting, it's a very, it's bigger naman siya, di ba? Less than 20,000. I know kaya ang kaya siya. So anyway, the um, proposed act, the action requested from the council is, uh, I mean from the committee, is an endorsement to the full council of the Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ann. Yes, uh, Mr. Vice Chair. <laughs> Any comments? Motion to endorse? Motion to endorse. Um, second motion. Come on, second. Objection? <laughs> yes, that is an easy answer. I was looking at the proposed financial plan. Can we include also the updating of the PDIP? PDIP. Actually, I'm not sure that we just in response. Um, actually, the Development Administration Committee, handled by our Project Development Investment Programming Division, um, they included their activities for um, investment programming. So, yeah, we will also relate that, that um, the provinces and the NGUs, um, hopefully they can consider um, to conduct trainings or workshops in investment programming. So,
We will not set, we will not schedule the Arnold meeting for what I have. Ziba? Yes. Okay. Any final words, uh, Vice Chair, before uh, we adjourn the meeting? Lunch now. Okay, Sige. So, from the Chair, thank you so much uh, once again for your never ending support <laughs> and cooperation as members of this committee. Again, Merry Christmas to all of us and God bless us all. So lunch is ready, let us all. I motion to adjourn you now. I vote to adjourn. Okay, second. Second. Okay. <laughs> second. Second. Then, no objection, of course, so meeting is adjourned.